Chairman, thank you very much. I'm pleased to yield two minutes to the gentleman from Iowa, Mr. King. The gentleman from Iowa is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank the gentleman from Washington for yielding and, um, and for leading on this issue. I, I would just want to add to this discussion and deliberation that what really happens here is that if this should pass today, and I rise in opposition to H.R. 2499, Mr. Chairman, but it sets up a momentum. And sets up a level of expectations and the sequence of events being uh, the question that would go before the Puerto Ricans and those who were born in Puerto Rico that would live in any of the other 50 states, uh, presumably, uh, do you want to stay the same or do you want to change? And once that decision is made, then there is no going back. The momentum then washes over the dam, and the next question that comes back is, now you can't be what you were before. Now you have to decide between being an independent country or a free association, whatever that might be, or, or statehood. And when we get to this question of statehood, and I look at the standards that have been there in the past, I disagree with Mr. Young from, from Alaska. I can go up there and English is the language that's used in government and in business and everywhere you go. Yes, every language you can imagine is spoken in every state, but the practice in Puerto Rico is Spanish, not English. Eighty-five percent of, Span of Puerto Ricans uh, will self-profess that they're not proficient in English. They have very little understanding of English. And in fact, I'd ask unanimous consent to introduce into the record uh, the Latin American Herald Tribune data April 26, where the Secretary of Education in Puerto Rico, the Governor's Secretary, said English is taught in Puerto Rico as if it were a foreign language, and 85 percent aren't proficient in it. I ask unanimous consent on that. The gentleman's request will be um, determined by general rule. Okay, and then uh, it also seek to introduce into the record a letter uh, from U.S. English Incorporated, among it, uh, is a statement I think that's very important to consider here in this body, uh, which says, no state has ever been allowed to come into the Union where its core organs of government operate in a foreign language, and Puerto Rico must not be an exception. And, and Mr. Chairman, uh, it points out that Arizona, New Mexico, and Oklahoma had those conditions as conditions coming into statehood. The gentleman's request will again be considered by general rule. And I, and I, I thank the chairman. And I, I just would make this point that I wouldn't rise here today and take this position here today if since 1917 or even the last 50 years if the practice of education and government in Puerto Rico had been the unifying common language we would be unified as a people. Let's start Time that path and have expired. this discussion in a generation and I would yield back. Time the gentleman has expired. Who seeks